Welcome back. So we're going to continue our exploration of gravitational field, and we're going to look at this principle of Kepler's law of human uh, harmonics. So Johannes Kepler uh, was prior to Einstein, but long after Newton. And what he noticed in his first law was that each planet moves in an elliptical order with its star. So what we're going to have a look is the Earth and Venus moving around its star, which is the Sun. Okay, so we have the Sun here, obviously. This is what I'm calling Earth. And this, this planet here, which is closer to the Sun, but a lot smaller, this is Venus. Okay. Um, what, what Kepler is really trying to say to us with his law of harmonics is that the Earth and Venus are moving in a harmonious um, motion with one another based on the mass of the Sun. And this mass is obviously influencing the gravitational field and therefore their periods in which they move can be described by a set of equations or pretty much one set of equations. Now, what we need to ascertain within this set of equations is the radius from the center of the Earth to the center, or, or sorry, center of the Sun to the center of both planets. And we need to also have an understanding of what their periods are going to be. So Venus is in a smaller orbital radius. Therefore, we would expect a shorter period. So Kepler's law is given by this. T1 squared over R1 cubed. And this is in harmony with T2 squared on R2 cubed. And you can see here, by my diagram, I've highlighted what R1 and T1 are. Okay, they're referring to the Earth in this example. And I've highlighted what R2 and T2 are. This is re referring to Venus. And they're in proportion to one another if we use this set of equations. So... What we're going to try to do is we're going to try to find the period of Venus's orbit in term, terms of Earth years. Now, there's a couple of things that we're going to need to know. Well, first thing that we have to know is we have to know the length of an Earth year. And we can just call it one year. You could call it 365 days. You could put it into seconds. But for this example, it's quite quite reasonable for us to just put it in one year. Now, I'll just add here that we know from observation that Venus moves around the Sun, or orbits the Sun, in 225 Earth days. So we know that. So we're going to be trying to get an answer which is approximately close, or approximately that, that, that answer. Our radius of the Earth, okay, we know is 150 million kilometres or 150 times 10 to the 9 meters. The period of Venus, that's what we're finding, so that's our unknown. And we know that the radius of Venus, it's closer to the Sun, okay, less than one astronomical uh, unit, but it's uh, 108 times 10 to the 9 meters away from the Sun. So therefore, we can use Kepler's law, Okay, and we can plug in our period for the Earth is 1 squared, just leaves it as 1. Our radius of the Earth, or well, between the Earth and the Sun, is that. That's going to be cubed. The period of Venus's orbit, we do not know. The radius from Venus, or the center of Venus to the center of the uh, Sun, is 108 times 10 to the 9. And that's going to be cubed. And we can rearrange this in terms of the period. So that's going to be 108 times 10 to 9, or cubed. 
150 times 10 to the 9 all cubed. Now I'm going to do a couple of things here just with this section of the um, expression. So just this section of the expression. And what I'm doing is really trying to simplify it down um, so I ha don't have to make as many uh, steps on my calculator. So what I'm going to recognize is that this is written as 108 times 10 to the 9. Okay, uh, I'll actually get rid of these brackets. There's no need for them for the moment for what I'm doing. And 150 times 10 to the 9. And all of this is going to be cubed. I can do that because if I consider that both values in this fraction are cubed, I can just use the law of indices to cube both of them. And then I can perform some cancellations here. Whittles the equation down just nicely where I'm just looking at 108 on 150 all cubed square root both sides and this gives me t2 equaling 0 0.611 earth years now if I take that a little bit further and find well what is that in terms of days I get 223 days, which is a close approximate to what we expect. Remember that we expected that the answer was gonna be about 225 days. Um, we've got our answer at 223. The reason for this, or the reason why it isn't exact as what, what we observe, would be largely due to these values here with their radiuses. Um, and that, that's got to do with, you know, approximations and errors with our calculations between those, those links.